Recording in progress. That's the sound. All right, Dude. I have to hold this with my face. I'm going to eat Mr. Goodbar. Ready? Yeah. Wow, I'm pretty sure so. Yeah, we straight chillin', serial killin', free cold villains on the mic, got you reelin', five star rated from the floor to the ceiling, if you catch a one star, no time for feelings, got a demon DJ on the ones and twos, by the name of the bucks, so don't get confused, so grab a seat, by the fire, roast them all over two, and prepare to hear the legend of the straight chillin' crew. What up, nerds? And welcome to another mysterious episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name's Bob. I'll be your host for this evening. This is episode number 344, recorded on Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a brand new Patreon pick. This one was chosen by Logan, and the film is Scooby-Doo from 2002. Before we get into it, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got our boy, Randu. How do you do? Uh, Heidi ho neighbor. How's it going? It's going very well. I'm glad that uh, that bump is in your staple now. Like, it's going to be regularly oh, oh, oh. used. Yes. Yes, indeed. I, at least until ABC comes a-knocking. We don't have that kind of money. We're fucked. <laughs> yeah, we have... No kind of money, really. <laughs> yes. Uh, last but not least, calling in from my immediate left, welcome back, stateside Soju. What up, it's your boy, Roju Stains. I'm back, baby. I'm back. Roju. That's like a Scooby's trying to pronounce yeah. Soju. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh, for Scooby you Joe, didn't baby. sell it for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try again. The energy is low tonight, so I'm pounding oh. Rob's leftover Halloween candy. Um, to, to nope. <laughs> I hope that good bar treats you good, buddy. Dude, it's, it's, not, you're bar. Need that sugar. it's not that good. It's just it's, peanuts. That's why fine. nobody buys Mr. It's good fine. Bar. It's Mr. Like good bar can... is a it's an anomaly of the candy scene. How did it make it this far? <laughs> yeah, it must have just stuck around from the old days. They stick it's it... just been like it's well, chocolate and peanuts. Nobody just buys a Mr. Good bar. You buy the, the bag yeah, and it's got yeah. all this right. random shit in it. And that's really cheap, I would assume, to produce. It lives as, in the bottle caps to... valley. Exactly. Like, well, yeah. you know, it's filler. It's filler candy is what it is. It's not terrible, but it's definitely no. filler. But weirdly, uh, peanut M&M's extremely popular. So Yeah, I that's I, true. I, I think I think those are trash candy, I'll be honest. Oh, okay. Peanut well, I, I'm not I, yeah, I'm not in like disagreement, them. but there are uh, there are huge fans of the M&M. What's your go to M&M? My favorite M&M is of course the candy corn M&M. Oh, yeah, the white My chocolate God. are good. So fucking yeah. good, man. Well, white chocolate's delicious. But those are only like holiday ones. If you're yeah. going on any other time of the year, what you going for? Um, I'm okay with the OG, but I like the crisp. They've got the crisp. I like those, those crispy are ones good. too. Those are yeah. kind of my go-to as they're well. They're just malt and milk balls, man. They're, no. They're better than that. They're dude. way better than those. It's like somebody <laughs> took a they crunch are. bar and they are malted. Made it into no, smaller things. That's a different. That's they, don't they, they don't. They don't. Yeah, they're not, they're not whoppers. whoppers. Whoppers are like chalk in your mouth. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> maybe con- maybe I'm thinking of a different variety Fred, then because Fred, you talking about, are they like the little crisps or is it like the big yeah. ball in the middle? The little, little crisps. Okay, that's a different thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Randy, what's your go-to? I don't like. I mean, I have a I have trauma associated with M and M's because I got a bunch of stitches out, and that was my reward when I was a child. Oh, so I associate it with physical pain. That's terrible. and I dislike it. <laughs> okay, so never mind. yeah, no M and M's for Randu. Only only Randu snacks. Only rigatoni. <laughs> rigatoni snacks. Um. Anyways, we got a movie to talk about, but before we do that, let's jump into some housekeeping real quick. Um, so our November poll pick has closed since the last time we reported, and the winner of that was Bride of Chucky. Surprise, surprise. surprise, surprise. Uh? <laughs> that, of course, means we have a brand new poll posted on our Patreon website. It is our December poll pick. The theme for it is Covert Christmas. 
And uh, three movies to vote between are Body, P2, and Scent. Hey, Bob. So tell me how those numbers are looking so far. Dude, they are like almost tied across the board. Okay. Whoa. So there's still a lot of people left to vote, but I mean, Body is in first place by like one vote. Okay. So it could be. Got really so good. many anyway. angles, it's almost just a curve. Almost. So, almost just a curve. Bob, we came up with an amazing idea for this poll pick 10 days late. Too late. It's too late. <laughs> oh, we're wow. sitting well, on the couch tonight and we're like, it. you know what we should have done? Just this. <laughs> and it was amazing. So next Christmas, next it's going to be awesome. Ooh, I, can't, I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> we went with a. We'll uh, tell you. With three underseen Christmas horror movies, that's probably why you're scratching your head thinking, like, I've never heard of these fucking movies. Or if you have, you probably haven't seen them all, I would say. Um, so make sure you get your votes in before the end of November. We'll see what we're talking about this December. Um, that's all we got for Patreon right now. The only other bit of news is we got a brand new episode of Let's Get Physical Media. You can get that anywhere you get podcasts. If you have an interest in collecting Blu-rays, 4Ks, DVDs, what have you, uh, check out our spinoff show called Let's Get Physical Media with Mikey and myself. We talk about all that fun stuff. Uh, the majority of it's horror, but not all of it is. Um, so yeah, check that out if you're interested. Gentlemen, do you guys have any news you want to touch on? Ooh, I am sorry I have been slacking. Like I am going to try to get back on the YouTube content uh, very shortly. But as of now, no housekeeping for me. We're going to get erected. We're getting I have nothing. erected. <laughs> Wait, has there been a mini episode drop this month? Uh, Not in November. I'm okay. going to drop one this Friday, though. Okay. So you know keep, your, keep your eyes drop. peeled for that. No, I haven't decided yet. I got to look at it. We got we got a few. There's a few. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There'll be one in your feed this Friday. So check that out. Um, I think that's all we got. Our houses are clean. This house is clean. All right. Let's jump into the main event. We're talking about Scooby Doo and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? <laughs> Bob, you got that box, but it's in the living room. It's true. It's in the other room, and I don't <laughs> want to get up to get it right now. Uh, I bought that double feature. Scooby Doo 1 and 2 on Blu ray. Got to get your hands on it. Got to catch them all, right? That's I'm, what they say in this child's car. Do they even sell them individually anymore? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, it would yeah, be hard to find, I assume. Yeah. Uh, Scooby Doo was released in 2002 with a runtime of an hour and 26 minutes. Uh, this was written by James Gunn, Craig Titley, and William Hanna, uh, directed by Raja Gosnell, and um, it's starring Matthew Lillard, Freddie Prince Jr., Sarah Michelle Gellar, and some other folks. Plot synopsis. Linda Cardellini. Linda. And Say her name. Other folks. Right? And the rest. Lin Linda Cardellini. And, and, a, and a talking rest. dog. There's a dog that talks. Um... <laughs> plot synopsis is as follows after an acrimonious breakup the mystery ink gang are individually brought to an island resort to investigate strange goings on gentlemen had you seen this before and would you recommend people check it out randy kick us off i think it's notable that the synopsis of that uh used the word acrimonious <laughs> in this family film about a talking dog thank you um, <laughs> um anyway I, yes I uh i have actual boxes though I'm pretty confident I saw this in theaters. I was a big Scooby-Doo head as a kid, as I'm sure many of us were. It's very much a gateway to horror for kids. Um, so I'd be surprised if there weren't, you know, a majority of people that were Doo fans at one point or another. I saw this in theaters and probably at least once or twice after. Um, I would recommend for families. I think I think we prefer to be called Doo heads. Uh, Doo heads? Yeah. <laughs> Doo dudes Dudes and dudettes. Nah, doobies. I prefer I prefer, I have a, I have another suggestion. Uh, Melvin do for Melvin do's. <laughs> That'll work. Nice, nice clip there, Randy. Juice. What about you? Um, yes, I had seen this movie before. I've seen it. I don't know a couple times. I, there's no particular. I don't think I saw it in the theater, but there's no particular time that stood out to me. It's like the first time I saw this movie, but um, I have seen it more than once. 
Um, yeah, I would reckon if you're a Scooby Doo fan, and yeah, like families um, who have like young, I would say younger kids, like in the toddler to like eight age, then this is a good like family flick uh, for like horror esque kind of themes. Um, and if you're a Lillard fan, you know, you gotta, if you gotta fill oh, the Lillard catalog. Um, so, I mean, how do you start anywhere else? Yeah. So, um, yeah, but this isn't like a, a must see even for Scooby-Doo fans, but I think you'll get a kick out of it if you do enjoy Scooby-Doo and who the fuck doesn't enjoy Scooby-Doo? Get out of my house if you don't what? so I, I agree with that statement get cool. out of bob's house <laughs> my house bob yeah uh have you you had you seen this before would you recommend this was a first time watch for myself what? i know um i definitely grew up watching the cartoon and i think uh much like the cartoon the movie is great like starter horror you know if you got a uh, uh, kids at home you think they might be interested in, in something like slightly spooky but ultimately like pretty harmless definitely throw this movie on and let them watch it and see see if they dig it or not um other than that i i recommend it to like scooby-doo completists and if you are one you've already seen it so yeah it's definitely like great starter horror but i wouldn't recommend it outright to just a general fan of horror movies necessarily um it's it's fun though it's a fun watch uh, sounds like a pretty solid recommend from straight chilling crew let's go ahead and drop that spoiler warning and we're gonna get into the rest of the movie here we go spoiler warning <laughs> oh. hang on one second randy i think you need to cycle your mic again Cool. I'm just going to do it the direct way. How's that? You talking? But better, better. No, no. Good, good. Yes, yes. Talk Hello. like a little bit louder. Talking a little louder, saying things, saying yeah. shit. It's it's yeah, it sounds overdriven. Jesus Christ. Okay, one second. Uh, I it should be the right good. fucking input. I don't know. Is that any it seems better? Like anytime it cycles, it's happened a few times, like in the past. Yeah, should testing, it... testing. That sounds okay. Say something like slightly elevated. Testing, testing, testing. I think it's okay now. Testing. That yeah, sounds I just fine. That sounds fine. I did okay. the sound test. That seemed to help. So okay. Oh, oh yeah, it sounds fine now. Okay. okay. Fucking Zoom. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> you will never get all the idiosyncratic things about this fucking program. Uh -huh. Okay. Juice, do you remember what you were about to say before I stopped? I do. Time? Okay. Well, why don't you go ahead and jump in with that? All right. So I just had a payday okay. from my smorgasbord of Rob's <laughs> Free candy. Uh, candy. And so we were, I was just bashing on the Mr. Good Bar, which is essentially <laughs> just peanuts and yes, chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. Dude, this is just... Uh, uh, caramel and peanuts. So much better. It's better. Though. It's, it's so much. So it's much. Better. It's a great combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I think the chocolate quality of Mr. Good Bar is in question. Completely agree. Yeah. And also, it's like so thin. Like a uh, payday is, you know, it's, chunky. It's chunky. Yeah. It's chunky. It's got some <laughs> mm to it. You yeah. Know? Ooh, it's it's got some bar. Mm. Mr. Good <laughs> Bar is like Whoa. the saddest. It's like, <laughs> it's like Mr. It's so flat. It it's it's like just so I mean, flat and flimsy. But the paydays, they got that extra uh, to it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's a, it's a Mr. Edible bar is what it is. <laughs> you can totally consume it if you wanted to. Wow. <laughs> Almost I got a spit that, take from that shouldn't that's that should not be as good as it is. That's better it's than not, the candy bar. I'll it's give not you that. As good as advertised. All right. I promise. No, no, I mean the joke. But it doesn't I matter. know. I'm aware. Okay. Sorry, right. Bob. Do you have a plop synopsis for I, us? I do. I also love that like you're fresh off the plane. Welcome to Mer to America and like fucking candy bitches. Yeah, they're to like <laughs> straight to the dome. <laughs> you got and a Red Bull. <laughs> you got a severe sugar <laughs> shortage right Deficiency. now. Deficiency of sugar. <laughs> I have a severe energy. We need to shortage. plump this boy up. <laughs> I I totally have a plastic synopsis, and I gotta get it out of my Gmail because oh, that's how prepared wow. I am. We are prepared tonight, even though this episode's like 
like three days late uh -huh, yeah. for some reason i know i uh I've, I've unknown got, reason got it all here here we go here is the full plot for everybody all right uh, after the gang solves the mystery of the luna ghost they break up due to interpersonal conflicts two years later they're all individually invited to a tropical resort called spooky island to solve a mystery and band together again upon arriving the gang meet owner mr mondavarius and he claims his guests are being brainwashed Velma attends a performance and is told the island was once inhabited by evil spirits uh, who have been plotting revenge since they were displaced by the resort. The gang investigates a haunted house ride. They find a brainwashing facility that teaches us how to act as a human in polite society. Daphne also finds an artifact called the Daemon Ritus. The island demons possess Fred, Velma, Mondavarius, and Daphne. Shaggy finds a, a vat full of souls and frees them, uh, saving his friends. A voodoo priest then tells the gang Mondo Various uh, has a demon sacrifice, and if he sacrifices a pure soul, they will then rule the world for the next 10,000 years. Shaggy realizes that the pure soul he's talking about is Scooby-Doo. Uh, the gang plots a, uh, a, a, a trap to capture Mondo Various, but it fails. Scooby's soul is removed with a daemon ritus. But Shaggy intervenes, saving Scooby. Mondavarius is then revealed to be a robot controlled by Scooby's estranged nephew, Scrappy-Doo, who was kicked out of the gang. Uh -huh. I know. Swerve. <laughs> Shaggy was kicked out of the gang due to his power-hungry personality. Using the tourist souls, Scrappy transforms into a monster. Daphne kicks a fucking luchador's ass and knocks him into the vat of souls, setting them free. And Daphne then kills the demons by using this giant disco skull and reflecting light upon them, which they can't survive in sunlight. Uh, Scrappy then shrinks in size, and the gang finds the real Mr. Mondavarius in prison underground. Scrappy and his minions are arrested, and the gang agree to continue solving mysteries. Roll credits. All right. Let's get into this Let's movie. Let's get in the middle of this shit. Here. We're getting in the middle of it. This movie started off with sort of like a classic feeling scooby-doo villain like yes i i kind of love how it kicks off even though there's like a random like pamela anderson cameo that pops up yeah. which feels like kind of out of place but also definitely that was yeah Sorry, you got I was, I was gonna i was just gonna say it feels kind of out of place but also goes hand in hand with the sort of self-aware nature this movie has going for it like it's not just for kids, but it's 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 got like some some references. Like there are some choices they make with the characters in this movie that are like sort of assumed. Like if you're watching the cartoon as an adult, you're like, okay, Shaggy and Scooby, they're probably potheads, right? And this movie has like several jokes in it regarding that. But if you're a kid, that's gonna go over your head. Like you're not gonna get yeah, it. and kind it, of probably it, like, like the cartoon yeah. did in a way. Yeah, yeah. There's, I think the way I would kind of just generally start to sum this movie up is it feels like there is, you can really see the love um, yeah. that's kind of, or, you know, the, the act, an actual tribute to the love and the feelings for the original Scooby-Doo cartoon. Also though, wrapped in this just absolute studio product. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of how I see it. It's like the people involved in the casting, the cast themselves, you know, James Gunn and stuff like that. The writers seem to have like a real, you know, affinity, a, a real like respect or kind of, you know, childhood love for the series. But also this is a family friendly, um, you know, studio product that has to act and represent itself in a certain way and i think it really just holds the potential for this series you know because the second one is like the whole same team and everything i think just this like the studio expectation also the kind of timing of when this came out and stuff like that it's very dated um but i mean there is some love here there's like some respect for sure I fully agree with that. Before I continue, I want to ask you a question, Justin. Did you watch the second one as well? I know you mentioned that you might. Yeah, actually, we were just watching this, watching oh. it before this one. Yeah, we were Great. just like, we just I have watched not, it. I have not seen it in some time, but um, I'm going to have, that's going to be a talking point later. But yeah, for this movie itself, I totally agree. This movie has like studio involvement written all the fuck over it. Like there has got to be 
at least five Scooby Doo theme song revisions or styled uh, alterations and or just songs that they just say some words about Scooby Doo in it and call it as like this movie seems almost like a record uh, commercial, a commercial for a the soundtrack of this movie. It's like that this movie whole movie just feels very commercial, but it's weird though because you're right. Like there is like there's clearly a love for the material in this in this. Like all the characters are for the most part true to a version of themselves yeah. that you could extrapolate from the original cartoons. Um I and it's like clearly making jokes that are commentary or otherwise meta meta relationships with the original material. So I mean, I don't I think this movie was written by fans, but it has like it was just dipped in this early 2000s level of cheese factor and it's just a victim of everything that a studio thought that a family movie had to have at that time and that involves insane like sugar ray showing up and being zombies for a second hell yeah and shit like that <laughs> that's like yeah, yeah, sugar ray. i don't know yeah exactly like the random like look it's pamela anderson and it's right. sugar ray and just those kind of things it's like also, it's so dated with its 2000-ness, just with its feel of what movies were at that time, especially studio movies, and a lot of it just feels like, buy this toy, like you said, very commercial, um, and it, it feels more I like looked, an Austin Powers movie than a Scooby Doo cartoon. You know, yeah, like kind of does. Yeah, I was looking this director too. It seems like that's his like go to yeah he's what well, the only one he had done never been kissed but he had also done uh, i was reading him off earlier and it was not a good track record but it he did like the smurfs which i think is probably you know more because of this but he just it seemed like he was like a very much a studio guy not like an that artist like kind of guy you know? so it sounds like it was probably like the the james gunn involvement or uh like it seems like maybe the writing was with love, but the directing was a yeah. product of the studio. And I that's, I mean, that makes sense. I definitely think that's the case. You know, I think that's, that's where you get the meta aspect in here. Like I get the sense, I don't know this for a fact, but I get the sense that James Gunn probably was a fan of the cartoon. And like a lot of these assumptions that people make about these characters are baked directly into the writing here in a way that it wasn't in the show and he's able to comment on these characters in a way that you never saw on the show. But like, I feel like it was always rolling around in the back of your mind, which is pretty great. And I, I kind of wish the movie was more that obviously like this is a kid's movie. So you don't want to make it all that you, it's got to be sort of flashy and engaging in a way that that's going to entertain a child for 90 minutes. Um, but I wish it, it kind of leaned more that way. Um, I do, I do want to like touch on the casting of like the crew and I like obviously like I think we'd all probably agree that Matthew Lillard kind of steals the show here as Shaggy. Like I don't know who it's, could do a better Shaggy. Um, did you well guys... establish that this is his role? Like yeah, the man was I think never so. more capable of a role in his life. Um, few a few would be in this role. I think Linda Cardellini does a fantastic job as Velma. She's so good. Uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar I think does a great job as Daphne too. Actually, and they they even kind of play on her being sort of like the damsel in distress in the show and mm -hmm. she's like kind of sick of that shit and sort of takes ownership of herself and kicks yeah. a lot of ass in this movie which is cool to see kick ass daphne is the best kind of daphne yeah man. <laughs> like that's by far the best version of her i kind of love everybody in their roles with the exception of freddie prince jr as fred i do not like it really I kinda, yeah. i'm kind of with you yeah yeah i'm i'm not he's just not fred to me Really? Really? I don't what, know. Let, let me. Wait, here's a thought experiment for you, Rob. I okay. want to hear what you think Fred is. What um, is he to you? I see Fred as sort of almost more of a meathead, just kind of like a beefier guy who, like in the movie, Freddie Prince Jr., he takes ownership of, of a lot of stuff that he has kind of nothing to do with. He, you know, Velma's figuring shit out and he's like, yes, yes, look at me, give me your attention. I figured this out. But I just see him as being almost more of like a jock, not like a total idiot by any means, but like more of a jock figure. And I also think that like the the bleach blonde kind of hair is just very distracting for me. The way he looks is just weird. It doesn't fit. Freddie he almost Prince looks doesn't more pull like, off the blonde. That's he's like sure. more of a surfer stoner guy. And we already got one of those. We got Shaggy, you know, it doesn't fit to me. I don't know. 
I don't know. Like, Fred was never, a, like, obviously it's hard to say, like, oh, what were they in the cartoons? Because yeah. they take this and almost put them, I feel like, where the fans want them to go or almost caricatures of where the original characters started from. Obviously, they lean more into the beatnik stoner aspect of shaggy and scooby mm -hmm. one thing that's weird for me like with the velma thing and i feel like this is like kind of leading into like oh what the fans have made this character it's kind of like the sexualization of velma like making her this like smart hottie or whatever or, you know this like indie hottie or whatever which is a little weird and i kind of want to talk more in depth about that also then turning Daphne into like this badass because the original Daphne is just not that interesting, you know? So they have to, it's almost like they have to do something interesting with these characters. Kind of same thing with Fred. Fred in the original yeah. is really just a like point and tell the audience what needs to be told. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. he really has no kind of like jock personality or he really He's is an exposition just like, machine. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he really is. Yeah. So and, yeah, over the years, yeah. you know, with a pup named Scooby-Doo, they made him like so stupid, you know? And so it's hard to say like, like you said, right? Like what is Fred to you? Because in the original, he doesn't have a whole lot of personality and over the years they kind of try to mix it up to make each character more distinct and interesting and it's like I, I, he doesn't bother me he doesn't like he's no Lillard for god's sakes but no. um he, I think, he does fine for me i don't know freddie prince for me doesn't really like i don't know he he's it's it's weird to say this because this is like based on a cartoon but he's almost too cartoonish in the role you know like he kind of plays it almost a little too big when Fred was traditionally, if nothing else, you could say he was something of a straight man, you know, somebody to pivot off of. That was maybe his only character trait you could point to other than, like you said, like being the, the guy who tells people what to do next. Um, I don't know. T to me, it's like I like seeing Fred do all kinds of different things. My favorite Fred is Mystery Incorporated Fred, where he's like an insane person who literally does not have room in his brain for anything but the concept of traps. That shit yeah. is um, funny as fuck. That shit is fucking hilarious. For two whole seasons is fucking hilarious. And that's amazing. Um, I also like a pup named Scooby-Doo where he's like, he's just like a dumb, like foolhardy, you know, self-assured kid who <laughs> always gets it wrong. Like there's something charming about that too. But before that, Fred was nothing. Fred was just this dude. And Daphne Fred wasn't far off. But like, at least Daphne, like, like for all its flaws, the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, as I recall, she was a little bit more assertive in that one. Um, but she also had the, before that, she was just danger prone Daphne is what they called her. And she would just be the person who trips and falls into her own trap or like does something wrong. She was, I don't know, like she was basically Britta from Community for a while there without the sardonic taste. So I don't know. I, I like what they did with her specifically because I think like badass, but still like, like style stylish you know girl or whatever. i think that's a valuable thing to to add to that character because it gives her some capability and a role in the group besides damsel and i like that they address that a little bit um but maybe a little bit on the gas too hard with it i would say i like velma in this linda cardellini in this role in particular was one of my first crushes so yeah very much in favor of that i think it's a little you're, you're right that there's like an it's an intense sexualization of velma and this is the first one i can remember being sanctioned by hanna barbera in some way but man, you, like, there's no shortage of cosplayers making hot Velmas. You know what I mean? Like, you well, go that's to a convention, curious that that's you, all you see. <laughs> it's curious that. that you said first crush because of this iteration, because this came out in 2002. And I think maybe my kind of disdain for it is maybe where it has come to this, you know, where it has developed at this point. And I wonder if it, like, this is the starting point of that, because it has gotten to the point where it's, I don't know, a little ridiculous in my point, like you said, with the hot Velma cosplays and stuff like that. Um, but in this movie, it just strikes me as kind of strange. It feels of its time as well. Um, like everybody's in their regular kind of suits, you know, the regular clothes with the color palette well, and everything like that. And she's got this like just deep cleavage that for happens Velma, late, that's no. just like kind of weird. They all have their different on alternate costume on the other. Yeah. They start yeah, yeah. in their classic costumes and all of them, except for maybe Shaggy. 
I don't think they're, I don't think Velma or Daphne are like overtly sexualized in this movie. They, there's no, probably like Daphne. a scene or two with a low cut shirt, but I, I don't know. Maybe you guys recall something. I don't Well, no, it, it's just in, it's just in comparison to what she's known to be up until this point, which is yeah. the sweater donned, you know, socially awkward, maybe, or a little, little like headstrong nerdish, you know, bookish kid. You know what I mean? especially because this is like draws so much from a pup named Scooby-Doo where she is like a little girl. Like, I don't know this, like the mysteries incorporated name, the idea of Coolsville, all that shit came from a pup named Scooby-Doo. Yeah. And so like, they're drawing a lot from that. And I, I feel like it's a little bit strange, but also I don't, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me to have people dress up as Velma at all. Like it's all good uh, to me. I just think it's a little weird that it's a sanctioned version of Velma where they felt like they had to sexy it up a little bit. And uh, like to me, like to its credit, it doesn't write her that way. And, you know, I would say that the writing for her is is reasonably okay in the context of this movie. Um, but it's not, I don't know. I agree that it's a little bit weird, but I also am not complaining because it was not my first crush, not my first celebrity crush, but it was an early crush for me because she's extremely pretty and she's like the smart chick and all this. I don't know. There's something about that that worked for 14 year old me. <laughs> See, and I think that's, I think that's a, I'm glad Randy pointed that out because it's not like overtly sexualized, mm -hmm. but there's something like the way that they made this character was to, to like, to capture that, like what Randy had, like there's obviously this like sexual appeal around this character. And I think like, I, I noticed like the, the cleavage, on her in this I don't know like kind of stood out to me I was just like I, I was like pondering it I was mm -hmm. like huh because I did just watch the original cartoons and and have watched a lot of the cartoons since and you know sometimes like oh her and Shaggy kind of have this thing or something like going on but I was just like something about this movie feels exploitative in this character there, to me I there don't was know. a whole movie's exploitative because well it's sure yeah drawing on nostalgia <laughs> Yeah, and there was sh so, shipping that to college students and adults as much as it is kids. That's true. There, there was something I was reading online about, like, I guess James Gunn's original draft for the script, and it was supposed to be much more adult and it was going to have an R rating initially. And I think they were just, I mean, it was going to be probably more sexualized versions of these characters across the board. And it was going to be a much darker tone and obviously not made for children. And I think maybe some of that came into play when they started production and then very quickly were like, hmm, no, probably not. We got to we got to change this maybe. course here. So like, I think they even went back to sort of CGI out some of the more the revealing. Uh, oh, really? They did, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, it, I think this sort of, the production just kind of started in one direction and then did like a hard turn. And some of that is probably still kind of left over and very confusing because this is a child's film. Well, yeah. and going back to the director because I didn't have it at the time. So this is the films that he had done before. Mm -hmm. He started Home Alone 3. <laughs> yeah. Never Been Kissed, Big Mama's House. Then he did Scooby-Doo 1 and 2, back to back, 2002, 2004. He did Beverly Hills Chihuahua, Hell the yeah. Smurfs one and two <laughs> and three. So I mean, this guy. I mean, he's a company man. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's the the digital star filmmaker. Like you know, one you of know, the stars like, of the movie is not real. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that I mean that that track record kind of speaks for itself. I think that like this for, for like this movie clearly cares about these characters to some extent but it really the directing is what takes that away i think and more than that we need to you brought up the cgi we have to address the cgi because yeah. this is one of the mm -hmm. like go-to examples of terrible end frame cgi in a movie and i know it was kind of early but even at the time i don't know about you guys i saw it in theaters and i was 14 and i said this looks <laughs> shitty <laughs> well that's what me and we, me and bob were talking about it. and since we just left spooky season i had to mention like okay i know i talk about this a lot but 1996 casper i just watched that shit and it looks so much better six years before with four main characters it does. as ghosts look immensely and actually it's kind of relevant in some way because it's similar premise you know take a live action casper one of the characters has to be animated or whatever and 
it's it like blows my mind that like six years earlier it like looks so much better and i think that's just another maybe stamp of the company because like i don't know there's a lot of cg in this and it all looks like really bad i mean i would say at least it seems like they put the most effort into scooby-doo for sure himself yeah. because the other monsters yeah. like look terrible <laughs> he looks expressive at least like but not you know he doesn't look great and what's what's sad is that it's all very distracting because here's the thing there's like they're building for off this this source material that is very much like hacky silly jokes you know what i mean they don't have to be brilliant jokes they just have to be silly little non sequitur silly little things that happen and having like scooby wander off into the <clears throat> the woods and you know like all that sort of thing the melvin do like all these little things, they're kind of fun and having him get chased around or like chase a cat or some shit, whatever it was like that all can work. And I feel like it would have worked if I wasn't so distracted by how bad these monsters and this Scooby-Doo look. The Scoop, the monsters literally look like they took a Scooby-Doo model and just like fucked him up a little bit, made him Damn. huge, made him bipedal, gave him little rib cagey things and big pointy ears and made him purple and that was it they're just a bunch of fucked up scooby-doos running around Dude, and it's like the worst to me was fucking scrappy do i agree scrappy was pretty bad too. like, oh mecha, like scrappy. mecha scrappy yeah, yeah. that was the worst for me. Dude. Yeah. Uh, speaking of scrappy did you guys i i okay so i i watched some like uh this guy i think justin you've been recommended him before on the slack this nerd sync he talks about scooby-doo quite a bit yeah um on youtube I think his channel is pretty great. I've watched quite a bit of it, but I watched his Scooby-Doo stuff and he said something along the lines of, I think it was him, said something along the lines that James Gunn intentionally uh, chose to write Scrappy as the villain so that he his reputation as a character would be tarnished to the point where he would <laughs> never be allowed in the franchise again. On a You're kind of tanking the movie by doing that though everybody i kind of agree like that's this is the thing is like it's like this movie kind of it knows what its source material is but it kind of is okay shitting on it a little bit yeah and i don't like really approve of that i don't know maybe i'm a purist when it comes to scooby but i kind of think that like i don't know this movie like once you get past that first scene with the really awesome looking fucking jester costume guy the luna like that's some like that's exactly what you want out of a fucking exactly yeah Yeah. exactly in a a haunt like and they take you to the spooky island and that's an okay setting for an episode of scooby-doo yeah but to have it be all there and like have it like with sugar ray and all this shit and have have like the split up of the gang at the beginning of the fucking movie like this, this is the first movie it's it's banking on you already knowing and loving these characters which is a fair bet is a fair bet but that's not what you came there to see you didn't come there to see characters you like the first thing you want to see is the a true representation of scooby-doo franchise on screen which is why that nerd sync guy made a compelling argument i would argue that scooby-doo 2 monsters unleashed is far better of a first entry into the series than this was because well, was, it revived. Go ahead. I was just thinking that they almost should have just been flop like switch. that was his exact so, argument, like, and I totally or... agree with that. I, I to the point where I honestly think that maybe they were wrote both these scripts were written at the same time, and they just decided that they'd rather have like an excuse to put Sugar Ray in it or an excuse to like <laughs> you know what I mean to put make Scrappy do because it's even more nostalgia bait maybe it I does, don't know the, the first movie does feel bigger in a way it's like I just to touch on Scrappy for a minute I, I love the introduction of Scrappy where we have a flashback and he pees on on Daphne and they kick him out of the gang immediately like I think if that's all we ever saw of Scrappy that'd be perfect it's it's funny he's a, a shitty character and they they throw him out but then when he comes back as like the big bad Whereas like historically, we always see like a, a grumpy old man in a mask or, you know, wearing a, a, a suit of armor or something, you know, like we do at the very beginning of the movie, like that's what you want out of Scooby-Doo. That's what's most satisfying for me anyways. But then we get the island and then all it's like all bets are off. Like it's full blown voodoo, like souls are being removed from bodies right. and demons exist all of a sudden. And there's this robot with a talking dog inside of it. It's just like so fucking big all of a sudden where you're like, no, what about the grumpy guy that lived on the island before it was taken over by this resort? And he's trying to get rid of them by exactly. scare, scaring the, the, the people vi- going on vacation, you know, on his home. Like they just, it, it felt What's... like unnecessarily huge 
to me, and I, I don't know, I wanted it to go back to basics, and I, I feel like well, they, they kind of took the leap early, like they took yeah, the leap into yeah. like the supernatural really exists in the first fucking movie. Yeah, exactly. Whereas they yeah. like the whole thing with the whole the Scooby Doo that everybody remembers, which is Scooby Doo, where are you? The original. That's the one where every monster was fake and a constant refrain was there's no such thing as ghosts. And this movie immediately fucking goes to subvert that instead of maybe embracing the thing that made the show great or one of the things that made the show great, which is in, imbuing kids with a healthy dose of skepticism instead of giant like spooky tales just for spooky sake, which in fairness, Scooby does that quite a bit in its legacy. Like yeah. over the years, it's done that a bit. Um, in some ways bigger than others, but like save that for the sequel, man. That it just feels like that's a, that's the next logical step for a sequel instead of going backwards. Because in the sequel, I believe they're all robots or something, or it's all like it's all Actually, scientifically no. explained or something. Or is well, it it, no, it's like some potion thing, but it's still pretty much the same. Like the they bring monsters, like okay, I miss real, real monsters. monsters or whatever. But, but I, those like, monsters were the classic monsters. Yeah, yeah. and we could talk <laughs> about like the sequel, but I, 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 I just want to touch on that, and then like I completely agree that. Like, I really like the casting, even with Frey Prince Jr. I feel like, oh, it's fun to see these characters brought to life. And I liked seeing these, even their clothes and stuff, you know, the mystery machine, how it actually is. You know, it's not a gritty, they don't change the colors or tone them down or put them in black or anything. I mean, that's the characters and it's fun to see it that way. But the spirit of Scooby-Doo is like completely shat on. One, like going to this island resort. Now there's one episode in the original Scooby-Doo where they're like in Hawaii and they do the whole kind of like tiki episode, but it's still at least dark and moody and spooky. Every single episode of that original series is, is dark. And it's, it's like we said, it's an introduction to horror and you kind of see where it could have been again in that opening sequence but they completely shit on this for what seems like this commercial again this commercialized spring break you know hot people in bathing suits sugar ray and this is like even where some of the datedness comes in like the you're up in my grill dog or whatever like just the talk <laughs> of this it just it becomes obnoxious in its like trying to sell you on something. And it's, it's like, like parents it, it just com- don't understand angle. I yeah. Like it that. completely abandons, like you said, the the original spirit and feel of the Scooby-Doo. And I hate that they make these things like CGI real monsters. And then like the spookiness and like the luchador and like the, I just, none of it seems like Scooby-Doo anymore. You know, know, a a bright island, a luchador, real monsters, like floating ghost heads. It feels like a- Body switching. It feels, yeah, body, it feels like a property that a studio wants to make money on. (laughs) <laughs> like that's what it feels like and so then it starts to feel cheap and plastic and it's a shame because I was almost thinking like with these characters I wish now they're all older now so like you can't do it like you did anymore but like I think it could be made better now you know like with those oh, yeah. spooky vibes and it is very much a product of its time which is like really unfortunate because that's a rough rough time well now they would be that's the thing cinema. is like this is the pendulum that i see and like we've been talking about the ghostbusters that's coming out on slack and sight unseen haven't seen it yet none of us have but just based on the trailer the impression i get is that it's going for what is basically like the opposite pendulum str- swing of what when this movie came out back then the trend was to like okay, we got to hype it up. We got to make it more modern. We got to modernize it. Okay. They got to make these kid, people seem like kids that kids recognize as something, their own snappy. Tribe. something snappy, something happy. Yeah. And now it's more like we have to have the utmost reverence for the source material for it is the Bible <laughs> and we are, but it's peons. Um, like that's the fucking weird that's valley perfect. we're in now. Yeah, you're right. Um, and I don't know, man, like, I feel like there's some middle ground that this movie should have hit. And they made that movie Scoob, which I watched half of. And really that movie felt like, 
I don't know, like like any animated movie. And it had the same, from what I saw of it, it had the same sort of problem that you're describing, which I think you pinpointed perfectly, which is that this movie is bright. And it's not just that. Like the thing about Scooby-Doo visually speaking is that everything they're in dark situations but they are bright vibrant characters that you focus on there's no way you're focusing on just the gang in this fucking movie there's too much shit on on the screen lit up and bright as fuck there's just too goddamn much even in the dark caves there's a goddamn disco ball spinning around and shit and, and, and like fucking fucked up scooby-doo's exploding it's like there and glowy heads and shit like it's not spooky it's not spooky in the slightest the original series may have been the only one to really do this but scooby-doo where are you it was trying to kind of be spooky and then explain away the spookiness as something explainable that was the through line of that whole like branch of the show and it's gone a bunch of different places since then or whatever but like it, this if this is clearly trying to capitalize on that and on the wit of a pup named scooby-doo and I don't think it really hits either strongly enough. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The one thing I will say that I at least appreciated that they did, I feel like they could have done it better, but still in shitting on like just the overall spirit of Scooby-Doo, the one good thing was I liked for like from the audience perspective that they at least gave you a couple of people where you were trying to figure out the mystery because like you said that was part of it too is you know in the original one of course you're a kid you're watching scooby-doo and after the first or second episode you know the person's fake so you're trying to figure out who is it you know and they always give you they they give you a couple different yeah they didn't always nail it in the original series but for the most part they at least try to give you at least two people where you could be like they have a motive, they have a motive, and kids are kind of figuring out. It was like this interactive thing. At least in this one, they gave you a couple different people where you're like, is this guy behind it? Is this guy behind it? And we just watched the sequel, and they did that too. So I at least appreciated that they kept that spirit alive because that was part of the original. Is, but how the but, fuck but are you this, supposed to discover it's scrappy? Exactly. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's where it comes back to the shit. But I at least it, liked that they were trying, and they did much, much better with that in the second film and again these two really should have been flip-flopped um Mm -hmm. now that we've like really like (laughs) talked about that idea it really should have been can i read you guys a tweet that i just found from one james gunn i searched james gunn scrappy do and this is the first hit oh boy a tweet a tweet to him that reads i only recently learned that you wrote the scooby-doo movies I've always been curious about why Scrappy was the villain. Care to share? And he wrote, because Scrappy is just a completely fucking awful person. (laughs) This man character assailed Scrappy. He didn't have that much far to, he didn't have far to fall, but Jesus Christ, dude. I guess that follows his logic is sound. I mean, mean, if his goal was to get Scrappy out of all of Scooby-Doo media with, with the exception of like one or two offhanded jokes at his expense he succeeded i haven't Dude. seen scrappy do in shit in fucking since this movie came out except for yeah. like, the, like again like mystery incorporated they made like one joke about him but to be fair like i mean the last time we saw scrappy do anyways was the 13 ghost of scooby-doo which was yeah the early exactly 80s. but everybody remembered him i guess and like you know i don't know scrappy was terrible like he was not a good character, but none of these characters are good. He was just kind of the annoying bad character. Yeah. Like originally, like they're they they are all archetypal characters, if if that, in Fred's case, not even that. But then you get Scrappy and he's archetypal too, but he's just kind of like obnoxious. And that's easy to uh not pay attention to in a movie like this, and instead just have like like Rowan Atkinson be the bad guy. Like have Mr. Bean be the bad guy. Why not? Why the fuck not? It's Scooby Doo, a guy in a mask. One, one, one positive I want to give this movie here is the setting. I actually thought the setting was pretty fantastic. The resort that it takes place on is like apparently a real fucking place, and it's all decorated very spooky with you know like uh, voodoo stuff adorning the walls, and they've got this like uh, giant volcano in the tiki bar, and there's like this spooky house ride up on the hill, and it's like okay, this this setting makes sense for a Scooby-Doo mystery, but 
as we've already touched on the way they light it the way it's shot everything is like way too bright and like very it, it's too bombastic like what what we kind of expect when they go into this mansion is like you know shifty eyes in a portrait or like a suit of armor that comes to life right and that would be enough to terrify the crew because that's how scooby-doo works that's what it's all about um but instead what we get is just like way too over the top I feel like they they nailed the setting for a really interesting movie. They just didn't utilize it to its fullest potential, I think. They they made it almost like a, a full-blown action movie instead of an actual mystery movie, which is what it's supposed to be at its heart. It's a mystery because we don't know what's going on, but like in no way is it mysterious, you know. Yeah, I like I the the visualization of the setting is cool i think what i hate about it is one like we talked about it's bright and i just don't want my especially with the first movie again maybe if they're swapped i feel differently about it because the second one's definitely much darker and moodier and got these kind of monsters but i don't want to see my scooby-doo squad at spring break like that's just not what i want from any scooby-doo iteration well they should never be at a like pool party with sugar ray i think we can all agree on <laughs> yeah that. it's just like like I an mean, episode the here or there setting fun. yeah i mean and even like i said there there is the episode you know where they're in hawaii and it's the tiki setting and stuff like that but it's still like nighttime and grimy and dark and there's this old abandoned village that they go to and stuff like that not yeah. like the fucking resort where everybody's fucking shaking their yabos and their booties and sugar rays got their frost Purpose. tips kicking and like i mean like i don't <laughs> It's just because also too, like for instance, there's one time where Daphne's walking on the beach. She's going to talk to that voodoo guy, okay? And she's got like her her pleather purple shit on and her boot, and it's like just doesn't look any kind of right. It's very for, Charlie's okay. Angels, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like like, like the the films. <laughs> it looks wrong. Like again, if this had been the second one, and then they were wearing like some you know bathing suit version of at least their colors, but it wasn't pleather and like shiny and shit like that, then okay. But they had because it was the first one, they had to put them in these outfits, and it's just on a beach. It doesn't fucking look right. Right. It's um it's it's like you said it's bright on bright and it's just like assaulting almost like it's like it looks for me it looks bad visually. Ugh. I think that the beach itself and the caves I mean that could work and I like and the theme park aspect that could also work. I think they tried to mash them up and that was maybe part of the problem is that, again that's too much maybe. <laughs> um but overall to me it's just that it's it's like they they didn't leave any room for spookiness at all in a fucking place called Spooky Fucking Island. Um, the spookiest that, place that was the haunted castle thing, and like you know that I love the production design in that fucking haunted house thing on its own. If it, the whole play, if the whole movie had taken place there, I would have been stoked about that. I thought that fucking that spot was great, but it, it doesn't, and it, it spends a lot of time in broad daylight on a beach in some questionable attire to Justin's point. I don't know, man. I, I don't know, but we've complained, we've complained a lot and I do have a lot of good things to say about let's, this movie. Let's, let, let's lay in the plane. Let's go ahead and rate this thing. Randy, you can kick, oh, okay. kick us off, slide into your positives. Okay, so positives. Positives for this movie are one, un, like uh, we've all said it, Lillard as fucking Shaggy is impeccable. It's a perfect, perfect casting choice and he's leaned into it hard. He's been voicing Shaggy more or less ever since in the cartoons and so on um he's beloved as that character and he's a you know it's great it's a good performance uh scooby-doo is fine <laughs> but shaggy's great um i think that both velma and um daphne are individually good versions of their characters um sexualization aside <laughs> um i think that they tried something with fred and I don't think that Freddie Prince was the guy to carry it with the meathead self assured or self, I don't know, self-centered piece of shit kind of guy. I don't know. I just didn't buy it as much as I did with Linda Cardellini giving a more subdued performance, even fucking Sarah Michelle Gellar giving a slightly more believable performance, I would say. But like overall, like I think that they did a pretty good job with the casting and all the baddies were good. Um, just get Sugar Ray out of there. We don't need Pam Anderson in there. You know, everything's good though. Um, I did like a lot of the production design. Like I said, the production design on that haunted 
uh, mansion ride was great. I loved that. I just hated the monsters and the plot. And like Justin said, this movie really does go backwards on, on what made Scooby-Doo work initially. <laughs> like I, I can't decide why they did it this way besides the idea that we just need to punch it up. We need to make it more edgy because edgy shit is what kids like extreme sports. Now that's what they need. They ride razor scooters. Now these kids aren't wowed by mysteries. Like it's that sort of attitude that I think fucked this movie over. And, you know, even down to the writing, um, as much as it has reverence for the original, the fact that they would make the villain j- j- literally a joke at the expense of the original, like not the original franchise, but of the franchise in general, is just kind of shitty and it just kind of it doesn't make it doesn't make me happy the way that scooby-doo makes me happy i wish it was just a dude in a suit and there were literal clues that you could follow like this was knives out for kids that would have been the perfect fucking scooby-doo movie um i don't know again i've complained a lot but the thing the jokes in this are hacky in all the right ways i think that for the most part the jokes work unless they're being undercut by you know being too topical or too dated or otherwise the CGI monstrosities that are nearby. Um, I don't think that, I think that a lot of the silly jokes really work. The Melvin do thing really, really fucking makes me laugh. Um, It's stupid and and in just the right way. So anyway, long story short, too late. This is a decent family film to watch. I suppose with your family, I wouldn't watch this movie really again, unless I was asked by somebody to watch with them. I might do that. I'm curious to see the second one and see how it holds up. But to me, this, this, does a decent job at making a family film. It does a poor job at making a, making Scooby-Doo a film. You know what I mean? Take Scooby-Doo to a film status. It does not bring that tone or that grittiness or anything that I think really sells the core concept of Scooby-Doo. So for me, it's a two, I think is fair. All right, two from Ray and Do. Uh, let me slide in here. Real quick. Bob, out of five. Yo. What you giving Scooby-Doo? Um, I really dig, I guess, the uh the the way the characters are written in this movie, the way that that their uh their characters are they're sort of like expounded expanded upon. Uh they're sort of self-aware in the writing, and I kind of dig how they do that. Um the the CGI of Scooby-Doo is like not very dope. Like his he's got a whole bunch of tiny little teeth, and it bothers me a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> Um, I think Matthew Lillard is by far carrying this movie on his shoulder. She fucking kills it. Anytime he's on screen, you just want to see more shaggy. We talk about Mary Jane. Uh, yeah, we really didn't. Uh, I cannot remember that actress's name either. Isla Fisher, is it? I, Isla Fisher. Yeah, that, that sounds right. I think it's Isla Fisher. Uh, she, yeah, Mary Jane, which is hilarious. It's Shaggy's love interest in this movie. Uh, it's, it's, quote, his favorite name, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, she does a solid job. Generally, I love the casting again, except for Freddie Prince Jr. I think that was a miscast for sure. Um, uh, the comedy is in this movie for sure. I dig that like some of the gags they pull off are taken like directly from the cartoon. Again, like the opening scene is really like kind of perfect. I wish the movie just w- was able to carry that throughout the rest of the movie. Like, there's a there's like a classic barrel gag where like Shaggy's on top or, or Scooby's on top of Shaggy's shoulders and they're stuck in a barrel and they're like on an oil slick and they can't get traction so it's just you know desperately trying to run away from the ghost but can't like it's, it's straight out of the cartoon I, I love that it's very goofy it's very simple I just wanted like more of that kind of physical comedy paired with more of a spooky legit mystery uh, which we we don't really get. Um, Again, I think the island setting was was really dope. Um, I don't think they cashed in on the music. Like the the cartoon has such fantastic music beats. Um, it's it's got this sort of like a swing feel to it, and it adds to like the mysterious tone of the show. And they don't do anything like that, like whatsoever in this movie, which is kind of a bummer. And it's not even- for lack of trying, my God, they use that. <laughs> Well, that yeah, well the, well, the theme, I'm not even talking about theme, yeah. I'm just talking about like the general general soundtrack, but the theme, mm-hmm. yeah, they like, which is all, which, the original theme is great, and they try to like make it snappy, make it poppy, you know, we got to update it for the kids, the kids don't have patience these days, and it's like, yes, they do, don't treat them like they're idiots, you know, they, they can understand, 
Um, I think that was uh, unfortunate. Um, I don't know. I'll I'll come in down the middle here with a 2.5 for Scooby Doo. Um, Soju, where are you? I really like that point about the music, Bob, because you're right in the the boom or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like exactly. Like the boom, 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 boom. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. it's boom, boom, you're right. Boom. It is so distinct and great uh, to boom. the original. And you're right, they didn't do anything. And I think that's again coming back to what the major problem with this film is, and it's that it's a studio product that that gives. Let's give Scooby Doo an edge. Let's give Scooby Doo an updated, like this is the new millennium or whatever. He skateboards. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and while I feel like the actors and the writers treat the subject matter like what it's based on with respect i feel like the studio does not treat the audience with the same respect kind of like you said like kid you know no kids this is what they want these days and it's like just make like a good film don't try to sell me on like a culture of or i don't know it's just like kids want scooby-doo yeah and like not just kids you know i mean the original came out in like the early 70s so now okay so the original came out so we're kind of like in a similar place with our age and and stuff like that but the original series came out in the early 70s and this comes out in 2002 so like your people are like in their mid-30s now who also are interested in scooby-doo who grew up with it you know so 20 years after the fact yeah grew up watching the original cartoon so like, like if yeah. if we're kids watching it in the '90s and it came out in the '70s and we can appreciate it, then yeah. Like, why can't that just stay the same? Exactly. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, so, I just I don't feel like it was handled well from a studio standpoint, from a director standpoint. Um, I do again the positive though the casting I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying the casting is fantastic of course Lillard Freddie Prince Jr. doesn't bother me that much but he is the weakest of the four um there is a little bit of trivia of why he was cast um that I'll get more in depth to but pretty much it was because him and Sarah Michelle Gellar were actually a couple at the time and so they wanted that for Daphne and Fred um so I mean that makes sense um i actually do like where they take the characters too like where they give them more of a real world fear like kind of lean into them i was kind of like a little bothered i guess by the sexualization of velma but i like their her overall like development the same with daphne the same with you know uh, all of them actually so um the characters are what shine again again another thing this i agree the opening sequence is awesome and to me, it almost feels like this middle finger. Like, see, we can do it. Like, we could, they could make a whole movie with that feel, but fuck you, Sugar Ray, you know? Or like, <laughs> no, this is for a new generation Sugar Ray or whatever. fucked us. And it's like, it almost is kind of like a middle finger because it's like, no, you know, you know, that's what we want. <laughs> like, uh, you know, and it does look good. And I like how even with the flood ghost, they pull like the head off and there's a guy inside. Like, just stick with it for your first movie like stick with at least like the staples of scooby-doo like right. come on come break on. the formula after you establish the formula exactly so i agree we watched the second one i don't like it's it's very much it's very similar but i at least like the darker tone and the original ghost and it should have been this one so i'm gonna give this one a two as well it's um fucking Lillard carries a lot of that score but the casting for the most part did good and and the acting was solid um the yeah everything else is just like fine to bad um for me so yeah two two is fine all right with Justin's two that's going to put our aggregate at a 2.2 I hope everybody was just wanting to hear three old men bitch about the Scooby Doo movie. <laughs> this isn't my cartoon. <laughs> Fuck this movie. It was paid I for. It. <laughs> it's, it's got Mr. Bane in it. What the this fuck? ain't Scooby. Mr. Bane. I don't know. I don't feel like there's too many defenders of 
early two thousand cinema. I don't so, think so. Our I, culture. I actually, <laughs> I think just about everybody in this movie, with, with the exception of Lillard, is like kind of hmm, fuck that movie. Like, I don't yeah, I really think they liked it. Um, but uh, yeah. anyway, I, mean, two, I wouldn't say fuck that movie. No, but, I, would, yeah. I, would, I would not. No, that is the thing. Is like this movie isn't like scorn worthy. It's no. just not. It's just not in the full spirit of things, really. It does not embrace the spooky side of the spooky cartoon. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, what a shame because they've As got horror fans. Casting. That's unfortunate. It's one thing nope. to say, like, oh, Transformers yeah. or something. <laughs> like, I get that. But it's, as people who are like, you know, diving into horror, and we also always say, you know, this did a big thing for horror that are the yeah. original series did. I mean, it was, it was so in like, Man, it had so much impact on so many people's lives about, I was even saying when I was watching those original ones, it hits like so many things that we think of now are like staples of spookiness, you know, the, the haunted armor, I mean, just like even the settings like this, you know, this, you know, in, in the South, this haunted little cabin in the moors. And so, I mean, it's just like, I don't know. It, it was very influential and they could have done better. They tropes. should have done better, especially with yeah, Lillard. You I just want to keep talking about this. Lillard. It's <laughs> how dare you fall gr- into the 13 it's ghost starter. Trap. It's a great starter horror. And I think like we all kind of grew up watching it and it got us on the track that we are currently on. And that is bitching about the remake. Let's go ahead and jump into our Rotten <laughs> Tomatoes segment and see what the critics and users think about Scooby Doo. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rotten Tomatoes segment of the show. For those who aren't familiar, what's going to happen is I'm going to give these two gentlemen the chance to guess within the best of their abilities uh, the aggregate scores for Scooby Doo on RottenTomatoes.com. So I'm going to start with Bob today, and we're going to start with the critics. There are 143 reviews counted in this aggregate. Um, Where do you think on the percentage scale they fall? I feel like it's going to be fairly low. I'm going to take a 35, please. 35. All right. That is extremely low. Juice? I think so too. Um, I think from a critic standpoint, they're going to see what this is, which is a bit of a <laughs> cash bar, you know, like, I don't know. It's a Mr. Edible bar. Of a yeah. Kind of. <laughs> um, and honestly, uh-huh. I, I, we don't always fit into this category, but I think that the straight chilling overall score is going to hit close with the critics. If I uh, like, I, so I'm going to take it to a 45, which is like where we were 2.25 yeah. yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm taking the 45 and saying the straight chilling crew is of the critics this week. All right. Well, you should have taken the under my friend. It's a 30%. Oh, 30%. Damn. oh okay. All that right. It's not a good score. For I just keep expecting to be positive, but that's yeah. Lower than I thought. It's pretty low. Um, yeah. I mean, you, like you, you nailed it. I'm pretty sure is that people see this as sort of a cash grab and it makes me think of this came out at around the same time as like Josie and the pussycats, which I love because mm-hmm. it seems like that kind of movie, but then it has this weird secret level to it. That's kind of awesome. Um, I'll talk about that another time. We're going to go to the audience score. There are 250,000 plus ratings. So no small number here. Um, and Soju, we're going to start with you this time. What do you think those 250,000 plus fans or not fans have to say about this movie? With that many, I feel like it's going to drive the score up a scotch. Um, and this could be, this is something where we didn't really talk. This isn't nostalgia level or timing for me, but it could be for others. You know, if you were younger when you watched this this movie, <laughs> I was only like three at the time it came out, maybe five-ish. Totally. So, Do you know I, what year you were born? <laughs> Can I tell you quick this? Quick math. <laughs> but, Be- Becky... Um, um, Real quick, Becky yeah. watched this with me and she told me before we started that it was going to be traumatizing for her to rewatch this movie because <laughs> when she was a kid, this film got stuck in their DVD player. So she has seen this movie oh, like man. dozens of times. Oh, and she's like, so yeah, she's a little bit younger than us. So that's, I don't think there's any nostalgia going on there anyway. Okay. Well, <laughs> for some it could be, but I think it'll drive the overall score up a scotch. I'll give it a 50%. 50%. Okay. Bob, where are you falling? 
I'm generally thinking the same of juice here. Just the 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 number of votes is going to drive it up. I don't think it's going to be super high though. I'm going to go with a 45. 45. Well, Bobby, you got yourself a sweep today. It's 39 oh, percent. That never happens. Bob, that's a hell skeet sweep. Sweep them skeets. Love it. Oh, Bob. Oh. <laughs> yes, Bob. Yes. I don't yes. think. Wow. Yes, I don't Bob. think that's the proper cleaning that's, method that's... for that, Bob. <laughs> it works for me, dog. <laughs> Get <It's>... the broom. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's like sawdust or what's going on there? It's a it's Bob's a, a scarecrow. <laughs> it's getting a little dried up in his old age. I can't even make I can't even I can't say these jokes. I'm, I can't. Oh boy. That's Alice, moving. get the broom. So here's um the critics. <laughs> Okay. All right, moving on. That was a good consensus. joke, by the way. I did like. I that love joke that joke, well. and yeah. also I I want to point this. I posted this on the Slack just before we recorded, but there is a Sco- there's a Johnny Bravo episode where the Scooby Doo gang that is one of the funniest fucking Scooby Doo nice. entries I've seen Damn. because it involves things like this. My glasses. I can't be seen without my glasses. It's fucking. <laughs> Dude, Johnny Bravo is funny as shit. <laughs> Have you That's guys? Uh, speaking of just like uh, Scooby Doo references and other shows, have you guys seen the South Park episode where the band Corn shows up yeah. and they are basically Scooby Doo? Yeah, like, yeah. Like the the crew from yeah, Scooby-Doo? that's an early, that's yeah. early, that's like maybe their first Halloween episode. I feel like, but maybe so. That yeah. shit fucking kills me every time. Yeah. yeah that shit's By the good. way, speaking of that, the uh, there is a horror movie that is basically character replications of Scooby Doo characters in a horror movie. So kind of like that adult James Gunn version of this movie that we heard about. I am not super into that, but it being, I don't know. I think. What's it I called? Think that a, I can't remember. It's like oh. mystery something. I oh, really? Know. Okay. That's an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea that I kind of feel like I'd rather get the actual formula right first on film before they start branching out into alternate fucking multiverses variants of this shit. But that's a whole different conversation. Here's the critics' consensus for Scooby Doo 2002. Though Lillard is uncannily spot on as uh-huh. Shaggy, Scooby Doo is a tired live action update filled with lame jokes. I think that's on point. My only complaint being that uh, Scooby Doo is always filled with lame jokes. That's very much in keeping with yeah. the Scooby Doo franchise. Yeah. Dude, Lillard <laughs> really did kill that shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, he did. I've never He's said like I don't know if you could for it. Yeah, I don't and know if then, you could ever bring a cartoon character to life so perfectly. Here's some negative reviews because they're sometimes funny. Um, even if even its look is awfully cheesy and clunky, this SFX sound special effects rather, notwithstanding, Scooby Doo makes Stuart Little seem like a citizen Kane in comparison. Damn. Dude, Stuart Little wasn't too bad from what I remember, but. No, it wasn't terrible because, I don't know, they only had one thing to worry about. Yeah, that's true. Um, The acting is stiff. The story lacks all trace of wit. The sets look like they were borrowed from Gilligan's Island, and the CGI Scooby might well be the worst special effects creation of the year. Man. Too many teeth. Too many teeth. (laughs) I did not that notice dog. that. That's really funny. That That's the first thing I noticed. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> Takes him all day to floss. First thing? <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Thank you, Randu. Let's go ahead and jump over into some trivia. It's totally time for trivia. I guess I did forget the Rob's a teeth guy. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you could phrase it that way. So real quick, just to touch on the thing I mentioned before, the director, uh, the director, director, the director, uh, Raja Gosnell, or Gosnell, how, do, how do you pronounce that name? Raja Al Ghul. I don't, I don't know the guy. Raja uh, wanted a real life couple to play Daphne and Fred. His first choice was Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. Freddie Prince Jr. didn't originally want to do the movie because he felt it wouldn't live up to the Scooby-Doo cartoons. Gellar talked him into it. So there you go. Maybe he was just phoning in. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, honestly, I mean, yeah. But also, like, good for him for uh, knowing that, at least from at one point. <laughs> like, he called it. True. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. 
This is wild. Very interesting. This film was originally said to have a much darker tone, essentially poking fun at the original series and was set for a PG-13 rating originally. Shaggy was set to be a stoner. Velma and Daphne had a side relationship and there were many marijuana references. According to Sarah Michelle Gellar, after the cast had signed on, there was a change and the film became more family friendly. However, by 2017, James Gunn confirmed that the original cut, the original cut of the film got an R rating and they had to use CGI to cover up cleavage. Dude, what? I Rele- have re- release, release the gun it. cut. Release the gun <laughs> cut. That's Dude. I will fuck fuck every DC property. I want to see that shit. Me as much too. as I think I'm gonna hate it, I would love to see it. The original cut got an R rating. That I is so. Nuts. so what did different. they do? <laughs> Damn. Uh, Melvin do. <laughs> One of the few Scooby-Doo films to reveal the uh, real first names of Scooby and Shaggy as respectively Scoobert and Norval. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. So, oh, when Daphne attempts to recruit Shaggy and Scooby to inspect the castle with her, Shaggy says, like Scooby and me, don't do castles because castles have paintings with eyes that watch you and suits of armor. Uh with the statue of the guy inside or whatever blah 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 everything that he describes is from the very first scooby-doo episode called what a night for a night from 1969 nice um and so yeah that's cool um 69 dudes you brought the original back nice. what can i say i'm a sucker sarah uh sarah sucker Michelle- for 69 <laughs> dudes <laughs> Sarah Michelle Gellar had to film Scooby-Doo around her hectic Buffy, the Vampire Slayer schedule, which she was still doing at the time. Producers of both productions arranged that she could spend two weeks in Los Angeles shooting Buffy and then the next two weeks in Queensland, Australia, filming Scooby-Doo. As someone who just flew from that area of the world, I mean, I know you only got to go to Los Angeles, but fuck that. <laughs> I mean, flying back and yes. forth every two weeks to do your job, like that sucks. Ugh. Your job doesn't, I mean, think about how much money she was Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's fine. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> um, there was an alternate animated opening. Damn, we need this cut. There was an alternate animated opening showing the cartoon versions of the characters, but it was cut for time. The sequence also featured a rendition of the Scooby-Doo Where Are You theme song by Artist Blank, which uh, I want you guys to try to guess. A famous, oh, R- okay. a famous R&B artist from the early 2000s did a rendition of the Scooby-Doo song. Think early 2000s R&B artist. I gave you the even the genre. Who? Anybody got any good guesses for who did this? I song? have one. Go, Randu. R. Kelly. Okay, R. Kelly, Bob. I can't remember if I read this somewhere or if it just like makes way too much logical sense, but Shaggy. Shaggy did this one. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. so he did do this one. Yeah, he did the Rasta version though. Uh, Ah, okay, so I guess they actually did put that in the final film. So yes, artist. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, Okay, there you go. I'm pretty sure that it was in there. I know that there was a Rasta version and I just happened to see somewhere that he did that version. And okay. then MXPX did the punk version. Oh, wow. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, MXPX. Mix Picks, my favorite band. Ah, uh, yeah. So the poster um, for this actually included the Luna Ghost, which is the villain that only appears for the first few minutes of the film. And that was because originally it was intended to be the main antagonist. Well, what fuck the fuck? Should have been. Should have been. God damn it, dude. What I would, I would fuck? rather watch an adult version of Scooby Doo, like where they do all that dumb shit. If at least the fucking setting and villain was and right, all that shit was right Mm -hmm. and the like i don't know james gunn can write character relationships like he wrote to the characters in this movie but he didn't write like you know i want to see like the plot didn't work (laughs) like they should have got christopher lloyd to be like the old crusty man who always lived on the island and at the end like we see him in a suit of armor and he's like the one pulling the strings and shit like that's what i want to see give me that or they could do a double like any variation on that is fine really like the only variation that doesn't work is that you do it with a character that we have only seen once as a joke right. and is only one 
only exists as a meta joke on the whole franchise that is mean spirited, which is not at all in the spirit of the show itself. I agree. Um, I think there's actually a lot of trivia on this, and some of it's quite interesting, but I think that's enough for now. Um, all right, yeah. oh, you're a monster. You know what? Oh, time. no, one more, one more. Okay. I, wanna, I want you guys oh. to guess. <laughs> oh. So, the the main villain, what was it, Mon- Mondavarius? Yeah, yeah. So, before Mr. Bean another actor was considered but ultimately turned down the role a beloved actor by this crew can you guys guess who it could have been oh i have a guess give it to me randu tim curry okay oh that's a good fucking guess uh tom atkins (laughs) randu's on oh no holy shit the other one no way really yeah tim curry that's law Longtime nice. fan of Scooby Doo and voice of uh, Ben Ravencroft in Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost. That okay. would have been baller. Was yeah. offered the role of Mondo Varys. He turned it down when he heard about Scrappy Doo. Because, <laughs> like many other fans of this franchise, he doesn't like Scrappy Doo. That sucks. I don't yeah. want to be Scrappy. I can't yeah. do it, Tim Curry. Okay. <laughs> That's not bad. That's yeah. not bad. Very um, okay. good. Yeah, <laughs> I had to stop her scrappy. Oh God, that's, that's not very good. Jim Carrey <laughs> was considered for the role of Shaggy Rogers. Boo! Oh <laughs> no! Thank God we got oh. the this movie. This movie would have been a point Just five. Talking, up, talking out of his butthole the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's famous, famously the only thing he ever does in any movie. It's I remember in, in in fucking uh, the Truman Show where he bends over and tells the creator, I mean, good night and good evening or whatever. He fucking there is that one scene where his ass is prominently stuck out as he's gardening. He's, he's an ass man. He's all about the ass. He's a gangly boy, and they use that gangliness to their benefit and our benefit. <laughs> that, that, that pancake booty. We got to uh, talk. We got to talk Cooter of the Week. So, Jew, what is a cooter and why are we hunting them? Thanks for asking, Bob. Cooter's a character type and a straight chillin' exclusive. The cooter has to hit three of the five points of cooterdom, and those five points are sexual deviancy, manipulation, smug arrogance overall looking attire and overall patheticness boys 2000 deuce <laughs> we got any cooters 2000 deuce. yeah yeah we do randu who we got bob i wonder if you were gonna say the same thing i'm gonna put uh one fred jones on the stand <laughs> All right, Fred's the cooter, Randu says. Do you yeah, have evidence? Up. Oh, boy, the receipts are in triplicate. Here we <laughs> okay. go. Here smug we arrogance is his entire character in this variation of Fred. He is true. a smug and arrogant man. That's he does true. come around in the end, in fairness, but he spends the bulk of the movie being very, very, very arrogant. Um, sexual deviancy. I would argue that him uh, <laughs> having, I think, every intention of stripping quote unquote himself nude as Daphne is pretty fucked up. That yeah, when they switch bodies, that's yes. true. He is that's very true. excited to look and he's holding her titties the whole time. <laughs> AKA she's holding her oh, titties. Yeah. And there's a bunch of that going on. And I okay. don't uh, I don't think that that's uh I, I think that fits. I get that um, look in attire, I would say just because and this is purely like aesthetic like Freddie Prince Jr. just can't pull off the bleach bond. I think it looks terrible. He looks like somebody escaping the law. He does also, not- <laughs> <laughs> he had a. I this was a piece of trivia I didn't read. He had to shave his head afterwards because it like ruined his hair. I'll bet. I mean, they had like he has pretty dark hair if I remember. Yeah, right, like, to yeah. begin with. Um, manipulation. I don't know if you guys have anything for that. I, nothing springs to mind on that. He's pretty like for the most part. Aside from those other things, he's. He's pretty on the level. He's not like lying to people very often. Right. Um, patheticness, though, uh, 
he's a little pathetic. I think he's pretty needy and like not all the time, but at least in terms of needing of approval uh, from fans and that sort of thing. Like he's very, like it, it comes down to again, kind of the smugness. I think those things kind of go hand in hand for him, but right. even without that, that's three points. All right. I was going to submit scrappy do scrappy right, do Bob. Give me the evidence. Well, he's obviously manipulative. He is the big bad in the movie. He's walking around inside of a robot, uh, tricking everybody into thinking he's Mr. Bean. Um, so he's got no that. No greater manipulation has ever I, existed. Well, he's also manipulating people uh, in order to steal souls, which is uh, pretty fucked up. Also, uh, his uh, his smug arrogance, I would argue, is through the roof even more so than than Fred's. Uh, he's actually kicked out of the gang because he is so like power hungry. Like he mm-hmm. is all about himself. He wants to run the gang. He wants to be in control and they kick his out, kick, kick, kick his ass out because of it. And, that, and that's why he like returns uh, to exact his, his vengeance upon the crew, which I would say is extremely pathetic to do so. Um, as far as like sexual deviance, uh, he pees on Daphne. I don't know if you really want to consider that. <laughs> His whole joke there action. is that he's uh, doing a dog thing to mark his territory. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's pretty fucked up. I don't know. Oh, I guess, yeah, if you think of it as, like, marking her as yeah. property. I so, thought I was thinking of, like, debatable. just marking the whole gang, like, that's, the whole thing. He, he's definitely got, like, little man syndrome, which, again, goes towards his patheticness. And as far as his attire, he's walking around in a fucking Mr. Bean robot. I don't know. Also, he's the worst looking CGI, if you want yeah, to attribute CGI looking, looking part, as part of Yeah, if you tire. want to hold that against him, then you can. That's I think true. that's fair. Yeah, I he mean, does edge out Fred, I believe. Even like, I think you're Fred's right. got like 3.5. I think Scrappy's got at least four. Yeah. Yeah. I think he ranks pretty goddamn high, but yeah, I'm, Scrappy I, do. Uh, I think Scrappy's beating him. But but Fred, yeah, Fred still ranks as. I think Cougar. Fred belongs in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, man made a needs to see a trial argument. board of of his peers. That'd be Cooters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anyone else? That's, I mean, I'm sure there are others. Those are the ones that I would consider actually talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are Just, the biggest ones for sure. Are you? feeling one way or the other I, yeah i mean both were good arguments i i feel like scrappy do probably has more overall points but fred definitely is a cooter in this movie right. i think there's we, more material to work with with fred in general because he's on screen more so yeah if, if they were if they had equal like like soup to nuts like per per screen time soup to nuts. you're talking about scrappy being a cooter 99 percent of the time whereas fred yeah. is maybe like 75 and that's the thing because yeah. fred is ultimately you know supposed to be a good guy or yeah. whatever you know he's good at his core just surrounded and, by cooterdom yeah but he's yeah. a rare non-villainous <laughs> that's cooter. true i'm gonna just assume that that urination was sexual in nature and we're just gonna of course gonna... you would bob of <laughs> course you want to Bro- rob <laughs> shower boy i'm just gonna assume are. yeah justin get yeah, the broom i mean, I mean <laughs> fuck, scrappy was rocking the old the the old golden shower you know and it, it was not consensual i think that's pretty fucked up old dusty bob over here you gotta consent to the to being peed on is all i'm saying yeah i mean peeing on people purely and simply <laughs> you know with the bombs today randy I think God we got. Goodness. I think we got two solid. We we got a cooter in Fred, and we got Mecha Cooter in uh, Scrappy Doo. I think. I think we got them. Let's wow. get we got him. him. Got him. Round them uh, up. Let's go ahead and uh, kick our shoes off. Let our hair down. We're relaxing. It's the social hour, and we're talking about what we've been watching this week. Hey gang, what you been watching? Randu, what you been watching, man? Ooh, so it's been a little bit since we've met. We took a few extra days, and also Halloween was in the mix as well. So I have seen quite a bit this time around. Um, not all of it horror, though. Um, I did watch for the first time all the way through Bride of Frankenstein, which I know was on our poll, but I decided since it wasn't going to win, I might as well fucking try to enjoy it. Nice. It's on Peacock, so I, I watched it. And it's it's good for its time. I, I will say it's like for me... I don't have the attention span that somebody from that era did. And I had a little bit of hard time focusing at points. And I also wanted to see more of the bride and it was very much focused on, on 
the monster himself. So yeah, she's like in know. the last six to eight minutes or something. I forget. It's not. It's not. Yeah, much. it's not yeah. long, and it's like it's a good scene. It's a really, like really good yeah. climax to the movie. And I also really liked seeing some of the connective tissue that was in young Frankenstein that I've seen so many times actually like sort of expounded upon like the, the old uh, hermit and all that stuff. I, I guess I never really realized that that movie was parodying really both of these films. Um, so I liked it, but um, you know, might not be a, a very frequent rewatcher for me. Um, the night house. I watched that. I found it quite good. Um, the acting in that is fucking great. And the premise in general is pretty interesting it's maybe a little bit hokey at, at, at times i would say but i think that the the sort of central story the metaphor th- that's happening at the core of it is strong enough to kind of push me over the edge of being like this is pretty good <laughs> like I, I like it mm-hmm. um i think it's telling a pretty compelling tale even if it whiffs a few moments of it um and that's maybe debatable it's been a minute since i've seen it it's only it's only been a week but there's been a lot going on um I watched a movie called Hypnotic with um, what's her face, Bobby. You know this movie? Who, who, what's her? What's that actress's name? Yeah, uh, she's have to look it up. she's uh, she's in uh, uh, Midnight Mass. She did such a great yeah. job. I can't. Think Katie. Of her name. Oh shit! What's her name? Hypnotic. Something. Katie Siegel. Katie yeah, Siegel. Siegel. That's her name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's not nearly as compelling when she doesn't have, um, the great writing at her back because this movie is not a well-written movie. It's an extremely pulpy, silly movie. Um, it's good for a little throw on you real, it's not a movie that demands attention. Um, for it's about a, her being hypnotized by a shrink who turns out to not be a good guy. And hypnotism is taken as like basically a superpower in this fucking movie. That's otherwise trying to be kind of grounded. And it's just kind of silly. Um, she does fine, but her, her character isn't given enough for her to like have any teeth or the movie itself to have any teeth. So I don't like it very much. I watched Grave Encounters for the first time on Halloween night. I enjoyed that quite a bit. That very much was um, the kind of um, found footage horror movie that I'm into. I like found footage. I'm an easy sucker for being immersed that way. So for me, it was an easy sell. And I think that they did a pretty good job and it was fairly unique in the gamut that was coming out around that time of that sort of film. So I give it credit. It's not the best. It's not the greatest movie of all time. I don't think it deserves to be in a top spot even in that subgenre necessarily, but it's pretty damn serviceable. I would say, um, ghost watch. I was just about to ask if you watch ghost watch. I did. I actually like it's in the internet archive or archive.org or whatever that is, which is for you or whatever. And I also own it legally and outright. Well, and don't get my sources away, Randy. Whoa. I mean, your on. sources, your it's like sources. the source. <laughs> oh no. Don't tell them the library of Congress has what they're looking for. Um, no, uh, it's exceptionally good. And it's it, every time I watch that fucking thing, I, I start, spend the first hour thinking like, Oh no, maybe this isn't as good as I remember. And then the end just blows me the fuck away. So Every good. Time. It's Every so time. good. Um, yeah. Finished Squid Game yesterday. Okay. Very good. Don't want an extra season, really. Don't want no. it to continue. It's one of those things. I think that seems to be common from what I've I had, I've avoided everything about it until till today, really. And it seems like that's a pretty o- overwhelming consensus that, you know, okay, you have this good thing, just let it be a good thing. Don't need Stranger Things for. Don't need it. Um, just let it be one season and be done because it was a good story on its own, but we're getting another season. Um, I've only watched a couple episodes of succession so far. It's still good. I enjoy Brian Cox doing anything. I enjoy, uh, uh Rory Culkin. Was it Rory? One of the Culkins doing things. Yes, yeah, Rory. It's a, it's a fucking good show filled with some really repulsive people. It's the rest of development with a dramatic soundtrack. It's great. Um, I finally watched... I haven't seen before the Grand Budapest Hotel. It was mm. not the movie I was expecting at all. Yeah. Honestly, like it is very different. I was expecting it to be very much more like a mystery at the hotel. I don't know what gave me that impression, but that's the impression I got. Is it was a mystery that exists purely at the hotel, sort of like a um, I don't know, like a clue or a knives out sort of thing, like a like a pastiche on on old murder mystery novels. So it wasn't that. So I was a little disappointed about that because I did kind of want that. But it was good for what it was. I like Wes Anderson, man. Like the man, 
tells a compelling story and he does it with a ridiculous and unreplicable style or not or you know very distinctive style i should say and after that becky wanted to watch isle of dogs again so we watched that and it's again very impeccably done and honestly some of the best fucking stop motion animation some of the best animation in general i've seen in a long time is that the wait i love dog is that the um wes anderson movie mm-hmm. with is. the dogs and they speak japanese in it or whatever uh well yeah it's, it's set in japan the, the, the dogs people speak, speak yeah okay yeah okay yeah that was a it's, good movie it's a good fucking movie and yeah. honestly like i forgot how how hard that movie goes with the animation some of that shit is so goddamn impressive it, and I wish more movies took those sorts of stylistic liberties, even though you can't really replicate Wes Anderson. You could have more people try that sort of thing, like Kubo the Two Strings or whatever. That movie was fucking brilliant. It was beautiful looking. And I just wish more people were doing it. Was, I wish the default wasn't the Lego movie default now. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. So that's, I'm, that's all for now. <laughs> I've, I've said too much now. All right. Juice, what you been watching? Dude, I've been watching a shit, shit time. Um, Let's see if I can get through it. I watched the Eternals in theaters. Marvel is dropping four movies this year. Nuts in the butts. And all their shows, too. Um, Eternals. Man, um, I like the characters that they introduced. Unfortunately, it feels like that's not what they focused on. This is like some of the worst CG I think any Marvel movie has ever produced. A lot of people are saying like, oh, it's so beautiful. I thought it was like kind of rough looking um, from the CG standpoint. But overall, like it's it's a pre- I like that these characters exist in the Marvel universe now. Um, but I wish I like there was more development in them so i hope we get to see them in like future iterations i also thought it was funny that like pretty much in one movie um marvel pretty much knocked out a justice league i mean pretty much every character that's in the eternals has a justice league-esque power and it was just so much more successful at doing that immediately um I watched Nightmare Before Christmas, um, like right after Halloween, as I tend to do, to kick off uh, Christmas season. I watched On the Plane, Malort. I watched Pig. I watched that Woodstock documentary. So watching that Woodstock documentary, one, heading back to the United States and covering a movie based in 2002 really kind of affected my just general mood and view that shit was like a bummer for sure um that time period and just like some of the subjects they talked about just not uh, just about the general culture and like i don't know it was just yeah it was kind of and Limp biscuit just happened to drop a new album as well on halloween yeah um so that was relevant but i watched that it was a it was an interesting documentary it was interesting to see kind of like the development of that also just the funny talking about like trl and oh man what a time to be alive back then um um i watched silence of the lambs again i hadn't seen that in a while and that was one i was like man yeah we haven't covered this one and we'll eventually need to get to that um but enjoy watching that again and kind of watching how it was structured this time um it's been a while since i've watched it so i was just kind of like really paying attention with more of a podcast eye this time it seemed like um but yeah i watched that i also watched Oh, the pig movie? Not what I was expecting. It kind of nope. su- uh, surprised me and where it ended up. Um, what else did I watch on the plane? Watched some Sunny in Philadelphia. Watched some Simpsons episodes. There was one more movie I watched. Can't remember what it was. I watched Scooby-Doo. I did watch Scooby Doo Deuce right before this movie. And Randy, I we haven't talked about this. You like strongly recommending. You're like, oh, I'll watch this movie for. Like, I don't want to spoil it necessarily because you want to rewatch it. But I like, yeah, it had better Scooby Doo vibes, but it's not. It's, it's not good. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I hope you didn't take away that I thought it was a good movie necessarily. Oh, I, I did. thought it was superior. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it's not. It's not great. Uh, but it does have better Scooby-Doo vibes, for sure. Melvin Doo? Yeah. It doesn't have that joke, though. So where does that leave doesn't us? doesn't have Melvin Doo vibes? Can't watch. <laughs> shit. Can't watch. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, I Oh, I watched Badlands. That was the fourth movie. I never seen Badlands before. And oh, I haven't be- seen it either. Because um, what's her name is in it from Carrie, and we just cover Carrie. Sissy. And I was, yeah, Sissy. I was so, I was so impressed by that. And when I saw Badlands, I was like, oh yeah, I need to check this out. It was interesting. It's a good movie. Um, I know it's kind of you know considered a classic, and it was good. A little bit. It kind of like there's a character in that, like the main character who like fucking pisses me off. So it's a movie uh, where, where I'm constantly like, fuck this guy. But craft wise, fantastic. Like the acting was great. The writing was great. The sh- like cinematography, it was really good. So I'd never seen that before. So I was glad to knock out Badlands finally. So hey, that's about all I've been watching. Bob, yo, what you been watching? A lot. Uh, October 30th, woke up in the morning. And I was like, you know what I got to do? First thing, I got to rewatch Halloween Kills for the third time. I got to do it. I watched it for the third time. I had oh, to like damn. really, really solidify all of my <laughs> thoughts to... and feelings because I knew I'd go a whole year, a whole year yeah. without revisiting it. I'm sure I'll watch it again before we watch uh, Halloween ends next year and, and eventually talk about it on the show. I was like, let me get one more in. Just, just let me see. And like, I did that with 18, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And like, oh, I like none of nothing changed for me other than like, oh, yeah, this is just like at best. OK. Um, and I, I I'm still very glad that it exists, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy to watch a brand new Halloween movie in the theater in October. It, it's far from the worst Halloween Halloween movie I've ever seen. Um, I do want to say that that like song that plays when Big John is introduced that like stop look listen it's halloween like that song like really stuck with me on this watch and i was like i gotta find it so i did and i listened to it for the next like 24 hours nonstop. it's the best it's not on spotify (laughs) it is on spotify that's where i listen to it it is i try to find that because it's super old it's from like the it is old i can't remember the artist right now i couldn't it's on it wasn't I'll send it when i you. was looking at it so they must have just put it on maybe so man somebody wanted some cash and i'm definitely paying okay. like one Damn, hundredth of a cent I'm, yeah i did the same thing though i looked yeah. up i was like this song kicks it's ass. baller yeah it's yeah. really good i listened to it fucking all halloween day it was great um on halloween day i watched a bunch of movies hocus pocus casper the fog scream um other other than that i, I rewatched Did your ass rot off during that day <laughs> ah, damn no not Jesus. At all. it's a lot uh, of viewing for one day well we were sitting around waiting for trick-or-treaters that just unfortunately never ever came so, oh no it sounded nice. like he's a lot of sweeping going on that day <laughs> we, had to, we had to get the the, the push broom let me tell you there's a, there's, uh, there's a lot of sweeping going on just too much <laughs> We Long had days. anyway. I, I rewatched Club Dread as well, which is a movie oh I, yeah, I we saw seen. that together at theaters. Actually. Yeah, I hadn't seen this since it came out. I remember thinking it was terrible uh, mm-hmm. upon my original watch. It is slightly better than I remember it being, but mm-hmm. it is ultimately a very bad movie, and you don't really need to watch it. Um, I agree is, with you, but also uh, <laughs> Pina Colada Berg. That's a solid, solid joke. Yeah, it's. I like, that I, I like i forgot just how much of its of, of its like premise is trying to play on a slasher movie mm-hmm. and that that's why i wanted to watch it again i was like well i've seen a lot more horror since since whenever this came out and i was like well maybe i'll like get some more inside jokes or something and that's not the case it's just bad it's just not done very well um you don't really need to watch it Nope. Um, I also watched Last Night in Soho, Edgar Wright's latest film in the movie theater. Um, and? It's, it is one of my favorite movies of the year so far. I will say oh. it's not it's not a home run. It's not like Shaun of the Dead, but it is 100% worth your time. I recommend you slam your eyeballs into it as soon as you get the chance. A delight to the senses, isn't it, my friend? It is. A delight to the senses. Um, probably going to try and eke out a mini cast on that because we can't quite fit it into our regular schedule. But uh, check it out. I definitely recommend it. 
Too much sweeping to do. Too much sweeping. That's that's all. That's what I've been watching. Let's go ahead and get into our final segment, which is, of course, our hotline screens. Hotline screens. If you are listening, would like to call in and leave us a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, hit us up at 904-638-3231. We got two voicemails this week. First up, we're going to hear from our boy, Brandon. Let's hear what he has to say. What up, bitches? (laughs) Brandon. (laughs) Colin, I just watched this movie called After Midnight. Checked it out from Bob. Yeah. Liking it so much. That show was crazy. It was a very cool movie. Super interesting. <laughs> Anyone that hasn't seen it, check it out. Watch Hocus Pocus tonight for the first time. That was also very good. Liked it. <laughs> Anyways, you guys were saying if we could make a movie into a treehouse, a horrors episode, what would it be? I think Hereditary would be pretty wild to do. Like, I just want to see Maggie Ted get dummied off from the telephone pole. It'd be pretty funny. Um, Yeah, it's going to be Halloween in like 22 minutes. I should have just called at midnight and been like, what up? (laughs) Happy Halloween, bitches. But I didn't because I'm not a clever man anyways <laughs> keep it up thanks for being you guys zippity zappity zoop bye bye that started off as pillow talk and then took a hard swerve into baby <laughs> mutilation and then an even harder swerve again at the end where it's, i don't know you're a very clever man it sounds you're like you clever sober man. as a judge though oh yeah <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? What's up, you <laughs> motherfucking bitches? What's up, motherfucking? <laughs> yeah. Just watching some movies that you recommended me. I'm glad you enjoyed After Midnight. That is a fantastic film. I definitely, I stand by it. I stand by it, man. It, it holds up every time I watch it. Also, finally watching Hocus Pocus. I, I wonder about that sometimes because, you know, I watched it as a kid and I love it now, of course, but like watching it, as an adult for the first time, I don't, I'd really doubt that I would love it as much as I do. Like, but it's good to hear that somebody does. That's awesome. You know, I didn't love it the first time I saw it as a kid. Like I was oh, like wow. fine with it. Like it took me like nostalgia glasses to really like love that movie. Okay. I the thought. Yabo glasses. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. They're making that second one. Ugh. My I'm glasses. not. I can't be seen without my glasses. <laughs> well done. I'm not excited for that Hocus Pocus Me 2, but it's going to be CG'd out the ass, and it's probably, to touch on what Randy was saying with, like, this new Ghostbusters movie, it's going to be, like, super, like, it's going to revere the original in a way that, like, the original is never intended to be. It's supposed to be goofy and slapsticky and fun, and I don't know. It's, I don't know, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm calling my shots too soon. You're, you're not. I, I, they don't make a Yabos joke. We riot. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yabos die tonight. That's just something. a. Oh just a no! Snub, I, I hope think. they don't. Yabos ruin. die tonight. I hope they don't ruin. If they say Yabos, Yabos die tonight, I am going to lose my shit. <laughs> I hope they don't ruin Yabos by leaning too far into it. They they can't, man. It's like yeah, I feel like Disney would try to cover their ass so hard. They they can't make a titty joke anymore. I don't think anymore. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think so. Anymore, yeah. They were real famous for it back in the old stag days of Disney. <laughs> Always making them titty jokes. Just whoa, Yabos, come on, boy. Better <laughs> Even them dog sucking skeddy had fat yabos. Nice fat pillows there, many <laughs> Uh thanks for calling, Brandon. Always good to hear from you, man. Uh we got one more voicemail. Uh next up we're gonna hear from Logan. Let's hear what she has to say. My glasses. I can't see without my glasses. Hello, crew. It is Logan. I am very, very excited to finally listen to you guys talk about Scooby-Doo. I know it's not technically a horror movie. 
Um, but I remember watching it, I think around February this past year, and I was like, damn, I, I want to hear the crew talk about this movie. So I've been very excited about uh, getting to pick it one day for real, for real. Um, and I also do have to give a shout out to Diego for encouraging me to pick it. Um, cause obviously you guys are big Scooby-Doo, OG TV show Scooby-Doo fans. So uh, it'll be really cool to hear you guys, you know, hear what y'all's thoughts are. Um, I hope y'all like it, but also that is completely out of my control. Um, it is, like, it, I grew up watching this movie, too, so I definitely do have nostalgia going for it, but as I've watched it growing up as well, I, I do still think it holds up. Um, it's, it's kind of funny how um, this movie was, like, the establishing movie for a lot of these actors that were way bigger before even this movie came out, so every time I see a movie with, like, Matthew Lillard in it, I'm always like, oh, my God, it's Shaggy. But, but now he's Matthew Lillard, so. Um, yeah, I am very excited to hear it, and uh, I hope you guys liked it. Um, as always, see you all around. Oh, boy. Why did you guys shit on Logan's favorite movie? What is wrong with you? So Have you no soul? I mean, Randy's not the one that shits on anything ever. Yeah, that's no, no, like a very positive man. That's close. Yeah, that's, it's not. I mean, that's good enough. It, it, it's good to hear that that Logan did grow up with this movie and does have some nostalgia for it, though. Like that does yeah, exist good. out there. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It, and uh, hopefully, we didn't shit on this movie too, too hard, Logan. Um, and uh, did, did it some justice. Results anyway. may vary. That's all. <laughs> the classic Limp Biscuit record. Titled results, maybe. Bob. No, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta squeeze it in. No, did you listen to that new Lumbisco record? Yeah, I did. is it good? No, it's real bad. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's <laughs> so I... it's, there's they're still on the same level they've always been. No, it's like it's uh, no. it's, it's like worse than it's I. It's got a death curse. It does kind of have a death curse. <laughs> it kind of does. I don't know. Interesting. Not really. I don't know. I Listen to it, it and terrible. and uh, decide for yourselves. Nah. Um, we'll be we'll be reviewing uh, that Lim Biscuit's new record next week. That's yeah, what Robin about. Randy will be reviewing. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> honey and vinegar. That's what that episode. Is called. <laughs> totally, totally. Al Honey and Vic Vinegar. Thanks, uh, th- thanks for uh, for uh, signing up on Patreon, Logan, and grabbing a you pick the flick. I'm um, glad that you were able to finally nab one and uh, give us the opportunity to to slam our eyeballs into Scooby Doo and, and talk about it. Um, I wonder, it, it like you know, you mentioned growing up watching this live action film. I wonder if you ever went back and and uh, watched any of the OG cartoons or or any of the cartoon iterations. I know there's there's quite a few of them, and there's also like Absolutely. several full length uh, cartoon movies as well. I don't know. Hit us up. Let us know. Uh, have you dabbled in any of the animated stuff? Uh, I'd be and, curious. Yeah, everybody know. actually. Like, yeah. what's your relationship with Scooby Doo in general? Because yeah. I feel like there's prop. I feel like my supposition is that most people have at least one Scooby Doo representative in their yeah. history as horror. Because yeah, there's so many like iterations of it, yeah. and I'm kind of mm-hmm. curious. Like, what's your? What do you think is your staple Scooby Doo? Exactly. Because what's your we, yeah, we had Boomerang like from Cartoon Network where I got the OG, but like, I feel like my heart lies closer to a pup named Scooby-Doo. I think mine is like, I love the original. Like to me, there's something about it that I just really love. That's the one I grew up with the most, but I, if I'm being honest, the one that I'm most psyched to watch these days is still Mysteries Incorporated. Yeah, I agree with I like, that. I like. I need to get to back that. on that one. I wasn't watching it in Korea, but yeah. I need to finish it. I try to go back and watch the originals, and like I can do a couple, but it's it's very simple and so formulaic that after a couple, now as an adult, you're like, oh yeah, I kind of get it. Like I don't want to watch a whole bunch, but like Mysteries Inc. is like sort of an ongoing story, so you can watch something several. to cling to. Yeah, a little bit. yeah, it's a little more meaty um and and yeah that's usually what i reach for now um i haven't, I haven't rewatched any pup named scooby-doo since i was a kid so i i can't really i don't know if that would hold up for me or not pup named scooby-doo is really funny genuinely yeah. pretty funny from what i yeah, remember yeah it's the same people who did um tiny tunes okay yeah 
Yeah. It's very different though. It's like, yeah, it's it's like more like fucking Tiny Toons or Animaniacs than it is like where yeah. are you? Yeah. Nice. Uh yeah, thanks again, Logan, for picking this flick and for calling in. Always good to hear from you. Uh we got any prompts for next week you guys want to throw out? I mean, just well, the Randy just did, did one. <laughs> any, any, anything else? I mean, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Scooby-Doo. Uh, Let, uh, tell us about your Scooby-Doo uh, affiliation. Affiliate. What's which card-carrying fan are you? Also, or do we you could, hate Scooby-Doo? We tell could do to There's build off Scooby-Doo, sense. kind of like with the Simpsons one. Is there any kind of like because a lot of or some of their stuff? I think they did like a Foggy London. They did a Westworld episode, like in the OG. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. first 18 episodes, they did one where it was like a Westworld style where they go to this future land and it's all like robots or whatever. Is there any kind of like classic um horror tale or something that you think would have been a cool Scooby Doo episode or about like should have been done? Reanimator? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I, I the reason I bring that up is because I just found the name of that movie, uh, that is Adult Scooby Doo Spoof, which is called Saturday Morning Mystery, and it has terrible reviews. But that is the premise, and oh, it was theoretically based on, or not based on, but it's they're going for a reanimator style tone or a Oof. basket case style tone, uh, okay. which is not what I want in my do. No, I don't thank want you. that in the no, do. Thank you. That and gingerbread, get those out of my do. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know don't man. i do the do i'll try the i'll try the g bread do if i oh, find it my I, try. I, I think that somebody said it might be a good like like mixer. punch mixer i yeah. think that it, makes sense. i've never that makes tried sense it. yeah hmm. put a little rum rum ski in it you know whatever. also i don't give a shit about giving mountain dew money for a mediocre soda either so fuck it <laughs> <laughs> and randy's out just like that. Brand do spelled D E W. Like more shit I gotta do now. Uh-huh. Wouldn't it be D O O? Well, for the, for the endorsement, uh-huh. D E W. Um, so yeah, call in. Uh, leave us your voicemails at nine zero four six three eight three two three one. We're gonna be back next week with a brand new show. As always, we're gonna be talking about yet another Patreon pick. This one was chosen by Alice. The movie is 2009's jennifer's body slam your eyeballs into it get ready for next week's show until then please rate review and subscribe to us on itunes you can follow us on twitter at str8 underscore chilling on instagram at straight chilling podcast you can send us an email through our website straight chilling podcast.com and until next week as always all you mother truckers please keep chilling my glasses i can't be seen without my glasses i thought it was jennifer's booty Are we 